So the story of Medina McBest Cinderella goes all the way back to, all the way back <laughs> to when I was a uh, senior in college. And I heard uh, somebody reference uh, the three great populist movements in Western drama. And I said, what are the three great populist movements in Western drama? <laughs> and the answer was Greek tragedy, Elizabethan drama, and the American musical. And at the time, I was 20 years old, and I became really uh, fascinated with, well, what is it that makes something populist? What is it that brings large groups of people together in a society to experience theater? And could we learn anything about future forms of populist theater by looking at past examples? So uh, we took Euripides Medea, Shakespeare's Scottish play, and Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical Cinderella that they wrote for Julie Andrews uh, for TV, actually, in 1957. And we took these three examples of musical theater, Greek tragedy, and, uh, and, and Shakespeare, and laid them side by side. And what I learned when I was 20 years old in my dorm room uh, continues to blow my mind uh, 28 years later, 29 years later, uh, today, which is the synchronicity uh, in these stories. I couldn't believe the fact that without any forcing, just like number of scenes in a row, that uh, I've got a little underscoring now, that's good. Um, it's kind that, of Scottish. It was kind of Scottish. That, 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 uh, that's good. that uh, Macbeth's first soliloquy happened at exactly the same time in the story as Medea's first soliloquy, which came at exactly the same point in the story as Cinderella's first solo song that the big public event of the ball in Cinderella that everything's been leading toward happens at the exact same point of the big public event of the banquet in Macbeth. And you know, obviously with two tragedies and a musical comedy, there were, one of the tragedies being the Scottish play, um, that, 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 that there were um, uh, incredible dissonance that was, that was disturbing and haunting, but there was also this synchronicity that um, just fascinated me. And uh, there were a bunch of actors who agreed to work on this with me. We spent a semester, we put it on in the basement of my dorm, and then we got kicked out because the three women who lived in the uh, room above us said this is intolerable. Uh, and, and so we had to stop. So we then we moved it to the dining hall of my dorm, and then we got kicked out of that space, so we eventually did it in the experimental theater on campus. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, so that was Medea Macbeth Cinderella, and it was thrilling, and we were proud of it, and we were asked, uh, the idea obviously was, to, was, as you can tell, was to do these three plays at the same time, right? That was the, that was the experiment uh, to see what we could learn. And it was successful enough that we were asked to repeat it at graduation time, so we revived it uh, what, during my graduation time. Uh, and, you know, it was one of the uh, artistic high points of my young life at the time and continued to be. I didn't think uh, in my wildest dreams it was something that I would ever get back to. Um, I thought that was that really cool thing we did in college. Uh, cut ahead 14 years, and I'm going to pass the mic to my dear colleague. Wonderful. So, um, 14 years later, by that time, Bill and Allison Carey, who I know you know, and Christopher Liam Moore, um, and others who, who had formed a company called the Cornerstone Theater Company, had resettled in my hometown of Los Angeles, and were working in that town at the same time I was working with um, my company at the time, called The Actors Gang, and of which Kate Mulligan and Brett Hinckley um, and the scenic designer Rachel Haug, who also are festival members, um, we're also part of that company. The actor uh, Dan Parker. Dan Parker. Um, am I forgetting anyone else? Um, and so we were all in LA uh, doing our respective theater projects. And uh, I had been commissioned to do an adaptation of Voltaire's Candide for Cornerstone Theater Company. And, and what was it called, Tracy? It was called Can Dude or the Optimistic <laughs> Civil Servant. <laughs> <laughs> and it was performed with um, civil workers from, um, uh, from law enforcement and postal workers and library uh, workers. And MTA bus drivers. And MTA bus drivers. 
um, all in the, in the roles in the play, and uh, it was performed site-specifically at the Downtown Public Library, if any of you know that beautiful space. And um, Christopher Liam Moore was uh, playing the role of Candide, Candude, and on closing night, he was telling me the story, we got onto the subject of this piece they had worked on in college. And the moment that I heard about <laughs> that piece, Medea Macbeth Cinderella, I just felt lit up inside. And um, I'm sure you know this has happened at one time or another to, to all, all of you. Um, when you you know that just spark that happens when you when an idea or a thing comes into your world <laughs> and you just feel an immediate connection with it. And I felt that about this piece um, from the moment I heard about it. And so. Uh, very soon after, um, our two companies got on a road of doing a co-production because the piece is so large, it has 26 actors, um, including two, or at that time, three children, and um, actors of run the gamut of the age spectrum, and um, we decided to do a co-production of the piece. And at that point, I came and joined Bill as co-director and co-adapter uh, of the text. And we, um, we mounted this production in Los Angeles with our companies and began a, a, a especially intensive process of looking at those texts, those three texts that, that Bill had put side by side by side and starting on a journey. And that those days, this was just pre sort of computer savviness, so we actually um, started cutting up the scripts with scissors and then took glue sticks <laughs> and took little slivers of, you know, sentences and started... Sing single words. Single words, <laughs> looking to sort of mine the, continue to mine the deeper poetry and the ways that the, that the, that the languages um, spoke together and began to sort of shape that in all sorts of different ways, creating new vocabulary like moments of what we called simultaneity, where, um, where each of the plays, um, a, a character from each of the plays would be speaking simultaneously. So three people speaking at once, creating kind of a, almost a cacophony in a way, versus intercutting, where um, lines of text would be intercut from the different plays. Much of the musical of Cinderella, of course, um, those songs underscore a lot and shape a lot of the emotional values of each of the scenes um, and so on and so forth. So that began that process there. And then we did that and it was wonderful and very exciting. And then we thought, well, that's great. That's it. Right? That's good. Yes. And then we're done. We're done. And then a few years later, something marvelous and magical happened. <laughs> Only four years later, uh, a very, very dear friend of mine uh, named James Bundy, who Rob mm -hmm. went to school with, um, it's also incestuous, <laughs> isn't it? Is this, is this horrifying to you? Um, James Bundy was an actor at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in the 1980s. He left the Oregon Shakespeare Festival to become the managing director of Cornerstone Theatre Company. Um, and uh, is, is one of my oldest and dearest friends. And James, uh, after going to school at Yale to become a director with Rob, um, uh, not that many years later, uh, became the artistic director of the uh, Yale Repertory Theater and the, and, and the dean of the Yale School of Drama. And you know, because James is a very good friend, I thought maybe James someday, five, 10 years from now, will hire me to direct a play at his theater. That, you know, that would be, that would mean a lot to me. And uh, you can imagine my surprise and my emotion when he called me and said, Bill, I've been thinking what to do to kick off my inaugural season as the artistic director of Yale Rep. I wanna do something really special, really powerful, really surprising, and I've decided I wanna do Medea Macbeth Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> And so, four years after this Actors Gang Cornerstone co-production Tracy's described, we were back at it, this time working on the production uh, in New Haven with some Yale School of Drama students, including Peter Macon, who you may know as a member of the acting company uh, here in Ashland, and some of our friends from both the Actors Gang and Cornerstone. Uh, and uh, we were doing it again. And uh, in the largest space, the kind of largest scale production we had done, 
And uh, again, we just dug in, we did a lot of work on the script, a lot of work on conceiving it, and every time we go back in, it gets deeper, it gets more refined, it, the connections become more sophisticated, uh, but also simpler, you know? And, uh, you know, cut to 10 years uh, from then is now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, when I was lucky enough to be appointed as artistic director, I thought, you know, one of these days we're going to do Medea Macbeth Cinderella. And mm -hmm. Louis and I have been debating when is the right year. And we decided 2012 was the year. And uh, so here we are 10 years after the Yale production um, getting to dive in.